Before replacing a fuel injector, you need to verify that the injector is really the cause of a customer complaint. The System Analysis section of the Service Manual outlines the troubleshooting steps to find the root cause of starting and running problems. The Evinrude Diagnostic Software gives you a wealth of tools you can use to determine if an injector is defective. First of all, look for any fault codes. Use the monitor screen to check system voltages. Under Dynamic Tests, you can disable a cylinder's ignition or injector to help you isolate a cylinder or cylinders that are not producing full power. On some models, the fuel control adjustment test can help identify a cylinder that may be running too rich or too lean. However, don't attempt this test until after you have tested the boat's fuel system. Air in the fuel supply could trick you into replacing a good injector. Also, check for any air supply issues, such as a loose reed box. The diagnostic software also provides static tests to operate the fuel pump and individual injectors. Use an inductive timing light to check ignition and fuel injector circuits. If an injector is receiving current but does not produce an audible click, perform an ohmmeter test on the injector coil. Make sure the blue, purple, or green wire going back to the EMM has continuity. Injectors on 40 horsepower models and above can be pressure tested using an adapter kit and a gear case pressure tester. Don't overlook other potential causes of starting and running problems, such as low cylinder compression or poor fuel quality. Be sure to rule out other causes before replacing an injector. E-Tech injectors are assigned to specific cylinders. The EMM is programmed with the injector's coefficients to maximize efficiency. These coefficients describe each injector's individual operating characteristics. Never swap injectors between cylinders. This could lead to power head failure. If you're removing more than one injector, mark them to make sure they are returned to the proper cylinder. When replacing an injector, you must use a service replacement injector and you must use the diagnostic software to update the EMM. Be careful not to lose the tag bearing the injector's unique serial number. If you're returning an injector under warranty, you must print out an engine report and include it with the returned injector. Otherwise, the warranty claim may be denied. BRP uses this information to investigate issues with emissions-related components. Use the diagnostic software to verify the model number of the powerhead before you order the injector. If the engine has a replacement powerhead and you use the model number on the bracket, you may end up ordering the wrong injector. Use the diagnostic software and click on the Identity tab. Replacement powerheads will have an R prefix on the model number. They should also have a tag on the diagnostic connector. If this is a replacement injector, you will need to download the new injector's coefficients and install them in the EMM. Log on to DealerPort or Boss Web and go to Outboard Service Injector Coefficient Database Utility. Find the serial number and check some on the new injector's tag. Enter these numbers on the web page. Click on Download Injector Coefficient File. The coefficient file will have the injector's serial number and a .dat extension. Click Save. You can save it to your desktop or to another folder if you wish. Open Evinrude Diagnostics and choose Settings. Click on the Injectors tab. Click on the tab of the injector you're going to replace. Click the Replace Fuel Injector button. If the coefficients do not appear, click on Directory List to navigate to the folder where you downloaded them. Select the DAT file for the new injector. Make sure you choose the right one. Click Replace Injector. Click Yes. Evinrude Diagnostics saves the old injector's coefficients with a DA underscore file extension. If you need to reinstall the old injector, you can change the DA underscore to DAT. You can then reinstall the coefficients in the EMM using the same procedure. 
Use caution when handling fuel injectors. Prevent dirt and debris from entering the fuel inlet and outlet ports. If the injectors will be off the engine for a while, cover the injector nozzle port in the cylinder head to prevent contamination of the combustion chamber. On E-Tech models 30 horsepower and below, remove the oil tank retaining screw. Pull the tank away from the power head. Remove the vapor separator following the procedure in the correct service manual. Be prepared to catch the spilling fuel. A crush ring maintains the proper force to seal the injector against the cylinder head. The crush ring must be replaced whenever the injector is removed from its housing. Also, the crush ring must be replaced if a service replacement injector is tried on one cylinder, then removed, and subsequently installed on a different cylinder. Remove the injector from the housing with a slide hammer and adapter. Be careful not to hit the nozzle. Remove the O-rings from the injector. Remove the crush ring. Inspect the filter. Clean it if necessary. Install a new crush ring. Install new O-rings. Don't mix them up. The larger O-ring goes on first. Lubricate the O-rings with STP oil treatment. Reinstall the injector into the housing. Position the extraction screw hole on the same side as the fuel fittings. Press on the injector face until the injector seats in the housing. All mating surfaces must be cleaned before attaching the injector to the cylinder head. The injector, the cylinder head, the insulator, and the screws and threaded areas. These next steps apply to models 40 horsepower and above. Verify the condition of the O-rings on the fuel manifold fittings and lubricate them with two-stroke oil. Position the insulator on the injector. The wiring should go toward the fuel rails. Be careful not to pinch any wiring or hoses during assembly. Both fittings must be carefully inserted into the injector fuel ports. The retainer must engage the outer groove of the manifold fittings. Tighten the screw to the specified torque. Apply a light coat of triple guard grease to the threads and under the head of the mounting screws. Install the screws. Tighten the screws in stages, starting with the lower screw. First, torque them to 5 foot-pounds. Next, torque them to 10 foot-pounds. Then, torque them to the final torque specified in the service manual. For 30 horsepower models and below, apply a light coat of triple guard grease to the threads and under the heads of the mounting bolts. Install screws and washers through the mounting flange of each injector. The screws for the lower injector go through the coil mounting bracket. Don't forget to install the insulator between the injector and the cylinder head. Be careful not to pinch any wires. Leave the injector screws finger tight for now. The fuel injectors must be able to rotate slightly during installation of the vapor separator. Position the fuel injector and the vapor separator wiring and electrical connectors as shown. Install new injector seals in the vapor separator. 
lightly lubricate the seals with a drop of outboard lubricant. Install the vapor separator assembly onto the four fuel injector fittings. Install the three vapor separator retaining screws. Tighten the two vapor separator to fuel injector mounting screws to the torque specified in the service manual. Leave the vapor separator to power head mounting screw loose for now. Tighten the injector screws in stages following the procedure in the service manual. Tighten the vapor separator to power head mounting screw to the specified torque. Follow the service manual to complete the installation of the fuel injectors, vapor separator, and oil tank. On all models, prime the fuel system and check for leaks. Reconnect the electrical connectors. Clip the connector into the bracket. Reconnect the spark plug leads. Use the diagnostic software to pressurize the fuel system and check for fuel leaks. Start the engine. Check for fuel leaks one more time. 